It's Western States week and I'm back to bring you another preview video, this time going over my top 3 women to watch. As I said in my men's preview video, check that one out if you haven't already, there are so many amazing athletes in this field that I just don't have the time to run over everyone, so instead I'm focusing on 3 that you should definitely be keeping a close eye on, and I'm putting it out there, I'm pretty confident the winner of this year's race comes from one of these 3 women. As always, let me know your picks in the comments below, while you're down there remember to subscribe and join the channel Fantasy Free Trail Mini League via the link link in the description. Let's jump into it. Much like the men's race, the women's field has a very clear favourite. Katie Scheid is one of only three women to break 17 hours at this race after breaking the decade old course record last year. Only downside for Katie was that Courtney DeWalter had broken it just an hour beforehand and Katie's 16.43 was only good enough for second place. With Courtney DeWalter not returning this year, that leaves Katie clear, with a finishing time 25 minutes quicker than any other previous finisher in this field. On top of that, she's been getting better year on year, with a UTMB win in 2022, followed by that incredible second place here last year, and then a recent performance at Canyons that ranks as the fourth best women's performance of all time, at least according to the ITRA Performance Index. The revised course at Canyons is now essentially the last 100k of the Western States course, so it's effectively a dress rehearsal for the big dance, and it's safe to say Katie absolutely smashed it, winning by more than 50 minutes and finishing 6th overall in amongst a stacked men's field, in a time that Killian Journey later pointed out was within 4% of the men's winning time. To put that into context, Courtney DeWalter's record breaking finish at States last year was 5% slower than Tom Evans' winning time. Another mind blowing stat from that performance, shout out to Aid Station Fireball for this one and make sure you're following him if you're not already. Katie ran the iconic Michigan Bluff to Forest Hill section, albeit on slightly fresher legs, in 49 minutes. Courtney ran that same section last year during Western States in 56 minutes and Jim Wormsley covered that section in 51 minutes on his way to setting his 2019 course record. So yeah, Katie was absolutely flying back in April and has been training like a beast ever since, which is all available to view on her Strava if you want to take a deep dive, it's unbelievably impressive. Anyway, I think she's a lock for the win, and last year when Courtney DeWalter smashed Ellie Greenwood's long-standing course record, I would have bet good money that Courtney's record would stand for even longer. But following that Canyons performance, and the build-up that Katie's had, I wouldn't be surprised if it only lasts a year. It's been nearly three years since Heather Jackson made the switch from professional triathlon to ultra trail running, and yet I still have more questions than answers about her ability to compete at the highest level of our sport. Last year I left her out of my Western States top 10 picks for two reasons. Firstly, the two longer ultras she'd taken on at that point were both pretty flat and runnable, Havelina 100 back in 2022 and Black Canyon in 2023, and I wasn't sure how she'd fare on the Western States course that features considerably more elevation change and a decent amount of technicality in the high country, especially with the snow last year. And secondly, in both of these races she went out super hard, led for a long time, and more so at Havelina blew up late on, losing the lead and finishing 5th at Havelina and holding on for 2nd at Black Canyon. To be honest, I thought that pacing would be her problem at States, but she actually went out pretty conservatively, sitting in the women's chase pack more than 10 minutes behind the lead pair at the first aid station. Instead, it was the technicality that was her undoing, with a nasty ankle roll in the high country, ultimately causing her to DNF. That may sound like a pretty negative assessment of her first year or so in the sport, but I am a massive fan of Heather and I think she's clearly got the talent to be competitive, it's just again a reminder that experience on the trails, as so many fast roadrunners have found out, is super important. Since then she's had a respectable 20th place at OCC, showing that she's willing to work hard and improve her ability on mountainous technical terrain, and then followed it up by finally nailing her pacing and blowing away the field at Havelina, winning by more than half an hour, running the second fastest time ever and finishing 6th overall. It had seemingly all clicked into place for her and if you'd have asked me then, I'd have said she's going to smash states and likely push Katie all the way. However, back in February she towed the line at Black Canyon, went off like a rocket once again and led for almost 40 miles before blowing up and finishing 13th. So yeah, as I said at the start, more questions than answers, but if we get the Havelina winning Heather, then she's certainly got the ability to challenge for a win or a podium position. She's also incredibly fit, coming into this one fresh off a 5th place at the Unbound 200 mile gravel race, but I've got absolutely no idea how this one is going to play out for her. 
Rachel Drake is having a year to remember. Undefeated in four races over various distances and terrains, including challenging and technical sub-ultra races like the Hong Kong 30k and the Gorge Waterfalls 30k, as well as the super runnable and competitive Black Canyon 100k, which she won in impressive fashion, claiming a golden ticket into Western States in the process. Rachel has spent the last few years focusing on the shorter distances, following a challenging return to the sport post-childbirth. With impressive results over sub-ultra and 50k distances, such as 6th place last year at OCC, then at the end of last year Rachel ran the Olympic trials qualifying time in the marathon, running 2.37 at CIM, which I'm pretty sure makes her the fastest runner in this Western States field. She then chose to skip the Olympic marathon trials to focus on Black Canyon, which was her first step back up to the 100k distance since 2019, making that victory even more impressive. But that's also the biggest question mark going into this one, as this is her 100 mile debut. Rachel is no stranger to the Western States course though, having been an integral part of her husband Tyler Green's crew over his many top 10 performances, including pacing him in the latter stages of his second place finish last year. Anyone who's crewed before will know that you often end up learning so much about the course, the gaps between aid station, the tough sections and the sections to take advantage of, so I've no doubt that Rachel will be approaching this one with far more experience than most Western States debutantes. Circling back to that Black Canyon victory, Rachel made the winning move coming out of the final river crossing, picking an optimal line to climb back up the river bank which opened up a gap to second place Becca Wendell. Rachel mentioned in her post-race interview that this was intentional, having wrecked the best line up the riverbank beforehand. So, given all those hours on the course and getting to know the course crewing Tyler, who will also have been able to impart all of his Western States wisdom to her, I have to imagine Rachel knows exactly how she wants this race to play out, where she needs to be at all times, and the optimal spots to make her moves. So despite it being her 100 mile debut, I think she'll be coming into this one more prepared than most. So there we go, those are my three women you should definitely be keeping a close eye on this year. As far as my predictions go, I think Katie storms away with the win, narrowly missing out on the course record, but becoming the second woman to go sub-16. I'm picking Rachel to run a super smart race and finish second, and that Black Canyon performance has me worried for Heather. I think she takes it out hard, but fades and misses out on a top 10 spot, but I really hope she proves me wrong. I'll quickly mention that Esther Schillag is my other top pick, who's probably sliding into my top three when it comes to making my fantasy free trial predictions. Feel free to tell me why I'm wrong or let me know any of your dark horse picks in the comments below. I'll hopefully have time to put together a quick rundown video of my top 10 picks before the weekend. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss that one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back soon with more ultra running content. Cheers.